Meet my sea creatures. These guys are a ton of fun to make. They come from my love of beach combing and discovering treasures in the natural world. I'm going to show you how I make them start to finish. Most of my art begins with something from nature, and in this case it's shells that I've collected on many of my adventures. I then use polymer clay and I knead it or condition it to get it nice and soft and block out about how much I need for each project. When I start the sculpting process, I spend a lot of time figuring out the shape for a character based in reality and looking at pictures of whatever creature I'm depicting but also taking a little bit of artistic freedom to give that creature character. It's really important to me that each has its own personality and that when you look at it, you understand that that creature has a story and it's got a little bit of life to it. It's not just a textbook sketch that's meant to be one standard for the whole creature, but that each is unique. And so I play around in this stage and I have some fun with proportions and I play around with the positioning of the creature, where it's going to sit in the shell. For example, with the cuttlefish, I spend a long time positioning tentacles and fins and giving it that illusion of movement as well. One of the greatest opportunities for movement in the cuttlefish is in the fins. And it's part of the reason why it's one of my favorite parts of sculpting these guys, because the fin is a really easy place to say, hey, this thing moves around, this thing's been places, this creature has a story. Same with the stingrays, they also have fins. And the tiny little details, like the ears on this cuttlefish, I love those. I do them last so that I don't smush them while I'm sculpting, but those kinds of little things that you can add at the end of the piece really say, hey, this thing is, it has life. It's got its own story to tell. The octopuses are a lot of fun. They're a lot of work, honestly. Eight legs. <laughs> the eight legs is a lot. <laughs> and as I reach the final stages of the piece, I get into smoothing the fingerprints, stylizing the position, and just finalizing where it sits and that posing bit of the sculpture. And once I'm happy with where they are and how they look, they go in the oven, and then it's time to paint. The biggest thing for sea creatures is that most of these creatures that I'm creating are quite translucent, almost see-through, and obviously the clay I'm using to create them is not. So the only real way I have to communicate that sort of see-through effect is through the paint. I do this by slowly, little by little, layering many, many layers of hardly any pigment. It's, they're mostly water and just a tiny, tiny bit of color. I let each layer dry completely before starting on the next layer. Within each layer, I add variability and uniqueness to the patterns that I'm creating. And again, that's just another way to send a message to the viewer subconsciously that this creature is unique. It's not, you, you, our brains are really good at picking up patterns and we really want to avoid that with these guys. You want to avoid any sort of message that would say that this is something reproduced or methodic. You want it to be organic and natural and original, and so I take a long time playing around with this. When painting with the blues, I'm looking to add just the hint that there's something going on under the surface of the creature. 
by adding those really faint shadows in places where you might find their most dense anatomy in the real world. And as I build up the layers, the pigment becomes stronger and the spots and patterns become more apparent. And I still play around with it. I take my time. It's very important to make sure each layer, even in and of itself, is unique. And there's variability and expression in, in each spot even. And so as I build that up, I just really let the creature almost take shape and that's why each piece is so different from another even one octopus painted in the exact same color scheme can look very different from the next octopus depending on how it's positioned in the shell and how its proportions are sculpted and then the paint job different spots different placements of spots different placements of shadows even if i'm using the same color and same brushes create a completely different result so there's a lot of room for creative freedom and expression, and that's one of my favorite parts about these pieces. As I get to the upper layers, I have quite pigmented paint that I'm layering on now and I really have to be conscious about paint lines. So I'm constantly dabbing off what I've just painted on or using a brush to just smooth out those edges because the main thing I want to avoid here is for those spots to look painted. You really want to avoid brush strokes and hard edges. So I'm going slowly and carefully and maintaining the, the illusion that this is natural. I think on this cuttlefish, this was actually layer 23. <laughs> so I take my time with the pieces for sure. But with music going, it's often work that I can just get lost in. Finally, this cuttlefish needs its eyes. So any final really fine details I do at the end, and that means this guy's pupils. And there we go. He's all done. The last stage, of course, is their water. So I will mix the two-part resin, pour it over them, let it set, and we've got completed sea creatures. Thanks for following along. Okay, welcome back. I hope that was entertaining. I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe you learned something. Uh, if you had fun, I do plan to have more video content coming your way very soon. Lots of people have asked for tutorials and behind the scenes on prop making and creature design, painting, sculpting, you name it. So hopefully some of that very, very, very soon. Check out my Instagram for updates there. Have a super cozy season wherever this finds you. 
have a great afternoon, you guys.